So now we are um, going to address one of the most significant and important um, topics of this, uh, you know, the 101 class, which is the American Revolution, also known as the American War for Independence. And <clears throat> uh, the way that I'm approaching this will probably be different than, um, well, it's going to be definitely different than the way that you get it presented in high school. And um, I'm not going to um, be covering this by battle after battle. In many ways, you're going to need to do the readings um, and really fill in a lot of gaps of what uh, I'm going to talk about. Because there are so many things that I can cover from this. And um, I feel like we're inundated with certain narratives about it that just it's it's like you know the patriot you can watch tons of documentaries from the history channels on the american revolution or uh, the pbs at uh, the story of us and if you want to refresh yourself on kind of re reminding yourself of this uh, uh, traditional narrative and the battles and and the different sequences of events and various players um you know, you know, you should look up online on, on YouTube and you can watch so many documentaries on the American Revolution. Um, the the parts that I think that are important about it, as especially, you know, we go to the Howard Zen book. Now, when you read the Zen book, you're definitely going to get a perspective that you never had before. And what he portrays is colonists that are not necessarily unanimous about wanting a revolution that you didn't have a bunch of american well you know colonists that were thinking in some major revolutionary ways and 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 that the 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 different interests that were a part of what was happening uh, meant that <clears throat> some people may have not found themselves very interested in american revolutionaries point of view or the the british now having said that i don't want you to read the book and, you know, have this total view that when you're reading that, you're seeing all these various alternative views and then thinking, well, then nobody wanted the revolution except some, some rich people. I think that that would be a little bit of a distortion. Um, I don't think that he falsely sets the case the way he does. It's just that because it's such a new narrative to you and, it's, and, and, and hearing these alternative uh, um, kind of reactions to the American Revolution, um, it may then make your mind go completely to the other end of it and conceptualize uh, uh, something extreme on the other end. I think what we should remind ourselves is that the American Revolution, like all revolutions, is never the way... Uh, it, it gets articulated later in, in, in a very clean, precise way, because after all, it's our legacy that we justify our very existence. And so because of that, like all uh, uh, um, nationalist narratives, it has to be turned into a myth and a legend to a certain extent to really create a kind of patriotic um, um, view of ourselves. And it's clearly worked because regardless of what we think about all these things in the sense of uh, what Howard Zinn is saying and alternative views about uh, um, what happened back in the day, um, many Americans do July 4th and from the very poor to the very rich feel quite proud of this legacy. Now, of course, though, there is a divide and there, you know, now as more and more people that were marginalized from those times, um, they don't necessarily share that view and um, there becomes a kind of cultural clash. We should remind ourselves though that there, this was always existing. I, I work with a Native American uh, woman. She hates the 4th of July. She finds it hideous. And, you know, can we blame her? It would make sense that she would feel that way. Now, I also know uh, um, a, a girl who's Cherokee, uh, and I mean, you know, family uh, on the reservation, and their family, her family had a long tradition of fighting um, for even in the U.S. military, and she would label herself a conservative. Um, 
But again, I'm just kind of reminding us of um, these various things. And so I like kind of breaking up myths for us so that we can actually think about our history more critically, but not just even that. I, I think by looking at the revolution, by looking at all of our, our history in a little bit more uh, of a nuanced light through perspectives that we haven't heard before, um, I think it makes us more enriched. And I think that we can find a, a love for America on different levels that, that maybe still works, even from a critical point of view, outside of just having um, that national uh, myth uh, there. So um, I thought I would start off by showing you this clip from um, William Buckley and uh, Huey Newton. So. Here's the background on them. Uh, William Buckley was um, a very famous intellectual conservative. And when I say intellectual, it's not like Fox News now where you have um, Sean Hannity or uh, Bill O'Reilly um, shut up their opponents and cut off their mics or quick sound bites. This was a conservative show that, that uh, and I would argue, actually, I feel that, you know, growing up in an earlier America, you had Phil Donahue and you had guys like William Buckley. These were liberals and conservatives that believed in themselves and they had a wide range of people come on their shows and they would have political debates that were very interesting and informative and you'd actually learn something regardless of your politics. That's an old America that I miss, actually, because I don't see it on any news uh, station anymore. Okay, so... Anyhow, um, William Buckley, uh, again, the arch conservative, invites Huey Newton. And if you, I don't know if you know who Huey Newton is, but he was one of the uh, leaders of the Black Panther Party. Okay, by the way, the Black Panther Party now is completely different than this old Black Panther Party. Just side note. Um, but it, it converges kind of what we, we, we've been talking about from the beginning of our lectures up until now, which is the way that white America and um, black America ha have had different experiences. And in this case, we also have a leftist revolutionary um, speaking to uh, a conservative. But why then do I bring this up for the topic of the American Revolution? I just want to show you this brief little clip as this topic gets brought up, and then um, I'll discuss it just a little bit more uh, with you. In 1966, the Black Panther movement was founded. Prominent among the founders were Bobby Seale, who is its president, and Huey Newton, after Eldridge Cleaver, probably its best known champion. In recent months, of course, the Newton wing expelled Eldridge Cleaver, who was living in Algeria, so that the Seale Newton wing is nowadays supreme. Meanwhile, the Black Panthers have turned their backs officially on violence as a means of accomplishing whatever it is they propose to accomplish, concerning which we will in due course be enlightened. Huey Newton, you will remember, was tried and convicted of killing a policeman specifically of involuntary manslaughter. The slogan, Free Huey Newton, was to the late 60s what the slogan, Who Promoted Perez, was to the early 50s. The higher court reversed the verdict on a technicality, and Mr. Newton was tried twice more, the trial resulting in each case in a split jury. Finally, the presiding judge gave up, and Huey Newton is free. His mother is from Louisiana, his father from Arkansas, and he is the youngest of seven children. He was schooled in Oakland, where he now lives. His first book was called To Die for the People, and imminently he will publish his autobiography, which is called Revolutionary Suicide, a concept I shall now ask Mr. Newton, please, to explain. Uh, I'll explain it, uh, but if I may impose upon you, uh, I have a friend who's uh, almost dying for me to ask this question, um, if you will. Um, the question is, uh, during the revolution of 1776, when uh, the United States of America broke away from England, uh, my friend would like to know, what side would you have been on during that time? 
I think probably I would have been on uh, on uh, the side of George Washington. I'm not absolutely sure because uh, it, it, it remains to be established historically whether what we sought to prove at that point might not have been proved by, by more peaceful means. On, on, on the whole, I'm against uh, revolutions. Well, yeah. I, think on, uh, I think as revolutions go, that was a pretty humane one. Yeah, you're not such a bad guy after all. My friends will be surprised to hear that. No, no he's listening. His, his, his assumption was what? Uh, well, he was puzzled, but I think that uh, he was inclined to believe that you've been on the side uh, of the colonizers, of Fagelin. But uh, I'm pleased with the answer, and uh, I agree with you. The only revolution that uh, is worth fighting is a humane revolution. And, uh, also one that succeeds. Pardon me? Also one that succeeds. Yes, right, because, eventually. Uh, I feel that if if, uh, if King George had captured George Washington, he would have had the right to hang him. According to the law? Yeah. Uh, but revolution is always, in some ways, contradict some laws. That's why it's called revolution. Well, re revolutionary justice is its own justice, isn't it? Uh, yes. Uh, and, of course, it, it always professes to go under some uh, uh, human uh, right or hum uh, humane uh, consideration. And um, I think that we can judge revolutions on the basis uh, of how much, in fact, or objectively, uh, people are given uh, uh, a fair, um, are dealt with in a fair way, and are given more freedom. Um, I, I, I think that one of my one of my principles is that uh, contradiction is the ruling principle of the universe, and everything uh, in the uh, and phenomena, whether it's the physical world or the biological world or the uh, social world, has its internal contradiction that gives motion to things, that internal strain. And uh, much of the time that uh, we homo sapiens um, um, don't realize that no matter what sort of uh, conditions we establish, no matter what government we establish at this point, there also will be that uh, internal contradiction that will have to be resolved, and resolved in a rational, just way. And uh, of course, that uh, leads us uh, uh, somewhat, um, uh, it's very vague on how to deal with it. And uh, many times we claim uh, actions are revolutionary, uh, but really they're not. So I, I would, uh, I appreciate uh, your answer, and uh, I would agree with that part of it. So there was a, a discussion about the legacy of uh, the American Revolution and the concept of revolution by a, a hardcore conservative and a um, black nationalist communist on uh, an old TV show. Um, yeah. So, um, but I, I hope you paid attention to some of the discussions there and think about some of the things they were discussing. And then the question that I'm going to have at the end of this lectures, okay? And um, you know, and that's what I want you to do is to get your 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 wheels turning in your head and to really engage with some thoughts about um, this very important topic. So from here we move on actually into uh, uh, lectures on the American Revolution itself and the characters involved in it. <laughs>